Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Thursday. Hello, everyone. So how everybody is doing? What a wonderful week here in Southern California after a week of hell. But we shouldn't complain so much about it. There are so many things to complain. So, but now the weather is helping us. We are here again as every Thursday to talk about what's going on on the housing market here in Southern California. Um, I'm gonna share again my our weekly agenda starting for the market by the numbers talking a little bit about the interest rates um want to uh, talk about it martin is going to talk about the town of the week and then what you can get for your money it's so important these days more important than ever when housing affordability is a question every day so what is going on we have been talking about the housing market or the peak of the housing market well we see that in and it's definitely going down in orange county the, again this week another decrease of 69 homes uh, on the market uh, for sale here in orange county most of the cities keep this decline and we can see however there are a couple of interest cities that we see an increase of homes like the Huntington Beach that went from 229 to 237, or Yorba Linda got four and uh, new homes on the market. So, what you can see, the numbers are not very significant. Um, regarding the cities that we see that they have sold the most in the last weeks, we can the last week we can talk about Anaheim, um, and I think this we can tie this to affordability too. Because last week we have 210 homes and it was a very interesting week because it was a holiday week, super hot. And this week we have in, in Anaheim 188. So I, I personally believe that there is a correlation. And again, Mission Viejo, um, we have 152. And now this week 137. Uh, Martin is going to talk about the town of the week that we can anticipate at this Lake Forest. And it was uh, hard to um, find what you can get for your money in Lake Forest because the inventory uh, it is extremely low. Even though we see a huge number of homes coming on the market. Uh, no, no, sorry. And let me take that back. Martin got me distracted. If we don't see a lot of homes coming on the market, the inventory or the homes are remaining on the market, but the inventory is still um, low. I think it's done, Martin. Done. Okay. So anyways, so now if we move to Riverside County, here is another interesting fact. For Riverside County, they, they, they have 128 uh, new homes on the market since last week. So not... Uh, 105, I don't say how many say, 105 homes on the market in, in Riverside County. Uh, for LA, 159 new homes on the market. So we see that those are, are these typical, well, last week was very slow because it was a holiday weekend, it was very hot, not a good time to go around, not even tell you how, how much we enjoy doing open houses with over 100 uh, degrees. So we had an awesome time having that. And we appreciate the buyers who came to see the house during those um, those times. So uh, the inventory is still low, and this is one of the factors that uh, it is not making the prices crash. We are seeing price reductions, but remember that at the beginning of the year we were in a super hype market where houses were selling 200 300 thousand dollars above yes fifty thousand was the least so um that we we could see now we see price reductions and we also see some homes selling below uh, the asking price but we're not talking we're not seeing crazy uh, like we used to see the 200 above we don't see 200 below we're seeing twenty thousand dollars below fifteen thousand dollars below uh, i would say in, Price in homes that they are much higher in the scale, maybe a fifty thousand dollars exceptionally, but um, we are not seeing that. And the price reaction we are seeing is because of the sellers' expectations um, that they were too high. And it's hard when you were coming from this super hype situation to tell the seller, "Hey, you know what? No, we are not getting so many offers as we used to." I'm gonna make a pause here, a dramatic pause to say, 
there are some homes getting still multiple offers when the condition, location, and a price, the whole package together is presented to the buyer. So in those cases, you are gonna see that there are multiple offers, but a seller's expectation have to be according to the housing um, situation that we are going through right now and with the inflation and everything that we are listening now, all the bad news in the, in the media. So, but uh, interest rates, interest rates are not as good as we would like to. I, I was willing that uh, for many years thinking that for many years, for the last, it looks, it looks like years, that for the last three, four months that the rates will stabilize. We are not seeing that yet. Uh, for this week, the um, Freddie Mark survey is slightly above 6%. Talking to lenders, we know that they are above 6%. Will that head to a buyer's market? Well, to get to a buyer's market, first we need to go to a more um, neutral market and with more, more, more homes on the market. That is not happening right now. And another thing that we discussed last week, but we always get new public, is like one of the things, there are not enough homes on the market because the sellers who are sitting in their houses with a 3% interest rate, they don't have any motivation right now to sell and move. Who are the sellers who are motivated to sell today? The one that they are forced to do it. Downsizing, upsizing, relocating out of the state. Uh, they are always probates, trust uh, sales. So there is always activity. It doesn't matter what the market is. Uh, there is always activity. And will the things get better? And will let Martin to talk about a little bit more about the economy that is more his field than mine. Hello everyone and welcome back. Um, yeah, let's talk about a little bit of what's going on. Uh, well, the thing about it is that the market is still stabilizing and the reason it's stabilizing is because of the interest rates. Um, we have that old supply and demand. We do not have the supply of homes that we need uh, to make it a buyer's market yet. Uh, people's expectations are gradually becoming more realistic um the thing about it and uh some of my lenders who are online with us can attest to this i mean uh, i am seeing some interest rates as high as seven percent um the average is six but it there are very various factors that bring that into account uh the other thing also is um we have inflation uh and we still haven't stabilized that so expect another rate increase uh next week from the fed um and uh, really what they want to do is slow things down and uh what does that do uh to us well it's going to slow us down it's probably some of that stagnation prices won't go down as laura said you got several homeowners with equity you have several homeowners with a three four percent interest rates that they are not incentivized to move um therefore we are not going to have that inventory that we need it's just going to take us a little bit more to sell so uh my colleagues out there um uh, you're just gonna have to brush up your skills and getting your sales uh skills uh polished so we could get those homes and uh set the right expectation to your seller because we are not going to sell the house overnight now of course and i have seen those with some of my colleagues who have less of an experience and the the old um basically putting a carrot out there and bringing the price down substantially of course you're going to sell it over the weekend i've seen some of those still uh so if you are underpricing your home you're going to sell it relatively quickly if you're reasonable with your price and everything based on some of the models and some of the stephen thomas models you know we're averaging somewhere about 40 to 60 days on the market you depending on your location and uh, so those are some of the the uh, thoughts that I wanted to share with you. The other thing I wanted to share is the city of the week. Today, we're going to focus on Lake Forest. Lake Forest is south of Irvine, north of Mission Viejo, slightly uh, to the other corner north. Uh, east of it is Rancho in uh, Rancho Santa Margarita. 
and to the south you have Laguna. That's the general of the bigger uh, cities. Uh, the thing about it is that if you didn't know, Lake Forest is a relatively new uh, city. It was just incorporated in 91. It used to be called El Toro. So in 1991, it became a city and uh, it's not that small of a city. Today, it's running about 85 to 86,000 uh, 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 population size. So, and the city is broken up in the uh, Lake Forest that is close to the five. And then up the hill, you have Baker Ranch, you have Foothill Ranch, you got Portola Ranch. Yeah, Portola and, Hills. Portola Hills, sorry. Uh, and in addition to that, in the center, if you guys are familiar, there used to be a nursery. That's the Meadows. Actually, Toll Brothers are, are building some brand new homes. So you have Foothill, which is roughly about the 90s and 2000. Same thing with Portola, but you also have some brand new uh, development going in Portola. Uh, Baker Ranch, it's about 2000 to 2015. And then the Meadows is brand new. And right north of the Meadows on the other side of the, to uh, on the south side of the Toll Road, there's another development as well that uh, has homes built in 2010, 2020. Uh, and for those of you who want a better idea where it is, if you're familiar with Saddleback Church, that's where it's located in Lake Forest. Um, the other component to uh, it is part of Saddleback uh, Valley US uh, Unified School District. So it's a very good school district for those of you who are looking for um, just a general idea of education level. Did you know that 18% of the Lake Forest population hold a postgraduate uh, degree and about the other one, it's about a, let me double check my notes before I say something wrong. And so yes, uh, it is about 60% of the population holds some sort of uh, graduate um, education college level. So it's 32% have a bachelor's degree, 9% uh, have an associate's and about 21 have initiated the uh, college level but didn't finish. But uh, overall postgraduate is 18%. So it's uh, a very uh, diverse uh, community. Uh, your average, uh, you do have a large number. Your medium income uh, for uh, it's it, it was relatively high uh, on average is about a two, household income about two hundred thousand plus is what uh, that community is and of course you have uh, some that below one hundred thousand it's about twenty five to uh, between twenty five and twenty six percent on average and that's data that I the latest data that I have um, now uh, fun fact do you know for those of you who are single. Uh, women uh, outnumber men. It's 51.3% women and 48.7% male. So the state average is about 50.8 versus 49. So um, if uh, you're looking for a uh, girlfriend, girlfriend uh, you have an advantage. Those, that's just a fun fact here. Uh, the other thing also that I wanted to share with you um, Lake Forest is a nice community. It's just south of Irvine. So a lot of the people commute into Irvine, Newport for uh, jobs. Also, they also have some uh, larger employers that are there. Um, most of the people are in some sort of management position. So that is great um, that, uh, you know, the, the, the jobs are there are relatively close. It's a great place to live. It's got some newer homes. Uh, it is also has, uh, as far as uh, facilities, you got Whiting's Ranch, and uh, that is one of the biggest ones up toward the north. There are several other parks, several other uh, venues to go walking, hiking, um, and uh, let's see, as far as shopping, there's a lot of shopping uh, that you could do. Uh, around there as well. And you could go down to Mission Viejo, you could go down into the spectrum relatively close. Um, and uh, that's about it. That's all I could add for the the city for now. I'll give it back to Laura and she'll continue give you additional insights. Laura, what do you have to say? 
Well, I, I always have something to say, not so much about like uh, forest, but what we can say is that people who cannot afford to buy Irvine, we call Irvine the hump. They go towards the outskirts of Irvine, and that is one of the cities, this is, uh, uh, Lake Forest, Mission Viejo, and Tustin, that they are much more affordable. Uh, today, the inventory of Lake Forest is still very low. Um, it was higher, but it's still coming down. And today there are only 132 properties for sale. And that includes the sub um, MLS areas like Portola Hills, uh, Foothill Ranch and Baker, Baker Ranch. Uh, so that not, that's not a big number of properties for sale. So um, it's a great city to live. Uh, every city offers something different, but uh, and I have a hard time because my I wanted to put the price range today about the 700,000 so to be more appealing to the masses as housing affordability is coming down so but I have a hard time to find anything in the 700 in Lake Forest so I had to up my price to 750 so today I compare the cities of Anaheim, Corona and Lake Forest and you can put the order that you like if you want to play and see which one of is more affordable of the of the three or what you can get the most. Okay, the less affordable, uh, I give you a hint that there are not a lot of inventory. So I only was able to find um, a couple of properties in Lake Forest, more in the Portola Hills area. So for 744, about that, you can get an attached condo with one car garage um, about 1,250 square feet, three bedrooms, three bathrooms built in 1991 with an HOA of 250, what is very affordable. If you will remember that we have been talking about the HOAs the last couple of weeks and HOAs in these days are another burden for the home buyers because we are seeing HOAs with an average in newer communities of 450 if they have a master community and a sub association so it's easily you reach the four hundred dollars and that also is counting in when they are calculating their not their mortgage payment itself but it's part of their payment the monthly payment of the for housing so that is what we got in portola hill for 744 but we move to anaheim in anaheim you can get a small house a three bedroom two and a one and a half bathroom you don't get the full bath <coughs> Sorry, the AC is killing me. A single family detached with two car garage built in 1952 with no HOA. So you can get that for 749. So Anaheim has a larger inventory, it's a larger city too. So it's one I, I, if I don't I recall properly is the largest population in Orange County is the city. No, it's the second largest. I think the first one is Irvine in population or vice versa. One is the largest in population on size one, one or the other one. Um, now we move to Corona and Inland Empire keeps offering the better prices if you are willing to commute. So in Corona, you can get a single detached home um, with two car garage. Uh, about 2,100 square feet, four bedroom, three bathroom built in 1899 with a lot of uh, 10,000 square feet for uh, an HOA of 125. That is again very affordable. In the 750, you are going to see a lot of homes in Corona uh, going south, uh, the 15, going to the Sycamore Creek area. Uh, the advantage of that community is that homes are newer. Uh, the commute is longer, but the worst part are the property taxes are very high. Most of those homes have a high mellow rule, so the rates ended up, the property taxes ended up to be about um, close to 2%, what is high. So um, are there still homes affordable out there? Yes, they are. Are there opportunities? This is a great time for first-time buyers if they can, if they can afford the home. Rents are going up. And even though today a, a home mortgage most likely pay about 100, that this is coming from NARD, the research, $100 more in mortgage payment than a renter today. Remember when you are getting a, a we are paying for a house, your payment is fixed for 30 years if you are getting a 30 year loan. I know that today lenders are offering a diverse package with seven year arm, 10 year arm, and we can talk a little bit about that even though our expertise is no loans, but there is some advantages in the horizon about that today. Um, 
but and now I lost my track of thought. Uh, what I want to say, Martin? Okay, so I totally lost it because I I got I got thinking about the advantages. Oh, the the mortgage payments versus rent payments. But so your payment, the mortgage payment is fixed. However, rents are coming are going up, going up, going up. We are talking about a twenty to thirty percent in the last year in the different parts of uh, Orange County, even in Riverside, that it have been over the years very affordable. Rents are going up, so you think that you are saving money today. You are not because in a couple of years you are gonna pay more in rent. And remember, when you are making a mortgage payment, part of that payment goes to what your principal. And while we have, we're going through this inflation process, inflation usually is accompanied with a pri home prices follow inflation. So it's not that oh, the, everything goes up except housing, housing crashes. No, the housing market crash in 2008 was due to the um, lending uh, market, we can call it that way, or the loans that they were taking, that they were not the right loans for many, many buyers. And then, then they started, even the lenders started going bankrupt. And that was the beginning of everything. I cannot even remember uh, the, the ones, but I remember the ones that did it, the bigger lend, lenders here in, in South, in Orange County, where the countrywide century 21, no, you know, those, ooh, ooh, new century, new century, not century. That's a, another reactor. Um, and I, I think I'm missing one of the bigger ones and as they started. So we don't see that. And the, the reason why we don't see a crash, one is lack of inventory. Number two, with the, um, the default number. People have equity in their houses, even if they are behind and they're trying to catch up and see how they can make the payment. If they can sell their house, even at prices of last year, they still walk with money out of their homes, paying what they owe to their lender. So that's why we don't see a crash on the, in the housing market. Uh, at least we are, when we talk about real estate, we talk about local market. What is happening in Cincinnati? I have no idea. Or in Montana, or I don't know, because every market is different, depends on employment. And here in Southern California, California, is, um, shop, the shop market is very, very strong. So we cannot compare. It's like everything, but people are listening the news around the country and they think, oh, well, this is going to happen. If it happens, yeah, you can go and buy a house in Mississippi for $100,000. But it's not happening here, you know? Here so, is the cost of a pool, maybe 100. If I may interject a little bit on that. Uh, to Laura's point about uh, the bubble and, and the foreclosures and so on and so forth, uh, we have better underwriting criteria. So therefore, it's not free money as it was before. Even though the VA loans is still free money, you still have 100% financing. Oh, yeah but there are several underwriting conditions and not everybody could get a VA loan. So the thing about it is that the underwriting conditions are stricter and the possibility of a default is much less than what it was then. That's only on that part. But one of the things about if you are able to and if you can save the money and force yourself to buy something, even if it's an extra dollar because the interest rate went up and so on and so forth. I don't know for sure and the jury is out. I have several different people telling me different things. My lenders are telling me that, you know, anticipate that we're gonna have an increase in interest rates and eventually they're gonna come down, hopefully next year or so. So the expectation is that if you buy something at 6%, 7% today, eventually, we are going to see a decrease. Hopefully so, hopefully they are right. And some of you I see um, giving me the thumbs up, some of the lenders uh, that are joining us today. But one of the other things also that I wanted to share with you is about the uh, ability to buy your home and pay down that principal and be, build an equity. This is what I've noticed. And this is my uh, experience in the last month or so. Everybody's talking about California is so expensive, everybody's moving out of town. Probably so. For us in Irvine it, and in Southern California, it is not the case. And I do have those clients that are 
retiring or going into a lower cost state, I do have those clients. However, what I can tell you is that I have also had several uh, people come in and I've helped them get a, a rental. The reason is because they're coming from either out of state or out of the country. I could tell you that I've submitted 20 applications on homes and they don't get them. One of the key points that I had with this gentleman, the rent for a three bedroom house was 3,800. He offered and had a uh, 4,400. Five hundred dollars above asking. Six hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, six hundred above asking. That was one. Number two, I had another one that they also paid above asking for uh, for a home right north of uh, northeast of um, Lake Forest, and they finally got accepted. Some of people are asking ridiculous amount of money up front, up to a one year prepaid. Yes. Got to come up with one year's worth of rent in order to get that house. That's how demanding it is. Yesterday, I was with other clients. I could not tell you how many times. This is a rental that I'm representing. So therefore, one of the things that happened is that I heard the stories. People were coming out and saying, you know, I need a house. Because I asked them, why are you moving? That was one of my criteria is why are you moving? You're getting evicted or what's going on? I had one gentleman that has had four, believe it or not, four rental increases since when he moved in in August. And they keep them on a month-to-month -month basis. Does it violate state law and the restrictions based on how much we could increase? Of course. But more than one person came up to me and they've had substantial price increases. And the thing about it is they're not $20. They are the last one the gentleman shared with me. His last rental increase was $200. Huh. So if you, if you can believe that, I've had that happen. And that's what's happening in, in uh, Orange County where there is no uh, availability of homes for rent. There are several of them, but try to get an application in. And you will see that people are paying more than what they're, uh, they're posting those ads for, number one. Number two is that when you build equity and you buy your home, the thing about it is your home, you're in control. You decide when you want to move. I've had, in addition to the people that I've helped with leases, and leases is not our forte. We are not focusing on leases. Our focus is on the sales. But we have our clients so that we will not tell them no that we will help them. We have helped them in the past. They have decided to rent. And some of them have come to us and this is the number one uh, complaint. Number one, they, rent, they raised our rent substantially high. That was the number one reason. Second reason, the seller, the owner is selling their home. We gotta find another home. So the thing about it is you have to deal with making somebody else's payment Number one. Number two is that you're not in control of your home. I mean, you, you're thinking you're going to raise your children until they get out of high school and then you can buy a, high, uh, a, a home because you're going to be an empty nester and you're going to have less expenses, right? Well, the thing about it is that those plans are being forcefully changed because the owners of the property are trying to cash in, number one, or number two, it's just an excuse to meet the guidelines and stay within the requirements as to uh, for the state. I'm not saying that it's legal and I'm not saying it's correct, but that is one of the excuses they're using. I'm selling my home. Please move. As soon as that tenant moves out, guess what? The rent sum goes back up and they're charging five, six hundred dollars more for the rent or maybe more, depending on the area you're at. So I cannot... Uh, Common enough and uh, emphasize how important it is to buy a home and then you could build that equity, control your destiny. Um, those are the just the, the words that I would like to uh, yeah. share with you. And now Laura will come back and yes, continue. I'm going to talk about something about the, the rental properties and the bill that protect renters in um, the whole state. Uh, it takes precedent. 
uh, only if there is no rent control and it doesn't apply to everything so when martin was saying okay they increase it three times four times if it is a condominium a townhome a single family residence that is not in an llc or a corporation's name the seller has free will and they can do that the seller or the owner in this case the landlord can do that with no remorse you know so they can they can do that if the property is owned by a corporation they have to follow the cpi one year increase and all that are they taking shortcuts yes and there is ignorance sometimes in part of the tenants especially in the areas that there is no rent control i am not pro rent control don't get it wrong i am for free market at this uh, at that point but um, it is tough also to to hear these stories where uh, tenants sometimes are taking advantage because they don't know we have like in orange county we have been very lucky that we have been free of rent control until last november when the city of sanana started rent control for buildings i think built built before 1994 single family residents and condos are excluded and the maximum rent was three percent imagine three percent uh, for the landlords is nothing when the inflation is more but there is an adjustment the numbers i think are going to be released this month or next month for this year and i think they are going to be higher so every year i think in september or october when the city is uh, really uh, releases the number for the increases so there is more uh, control but um, that's only for the city of Sanana, la you live in this area of uh, city of LA. You there's very strict rent control over there. I think Long Beach too, right? Santa yeah. Monica too. Santa um, Monica. Santa Monica. Yeah. So in Orange County, we have been blessed. Is that the beginning of, of the an era? Uh, we don't know. Hopefully, it's not. Uh, so if you are a landlord, be reasonable. Uh, increase your rent. I always tell my clients because we represent a lot of investors. Increase your rent don't get behind because when these people want to sell their properties their income properties their duplexes triplexes with their tenants in place and if they are getting paid one thousand dollars and you still see that per month those tenants are not moving you know they are no those are subject to if i didn't mention those duplexes where they are not owner occupied triplexes fourplexes are part of rent control for the state of california so when they want to sell the property and the or the new owner will get only four thousand dollars for a fourplex uh, that two bedroom unit when you know that that nobody can get that and people are not moving so by um, the new owners are tied and we see even price I, I didn't check that recently in the city of santana how the prices have not adjusted but last year i saw some owners trying to dump their fourplexes because of this and um, and try to get to cut some buyer and um, some buyers agent who are not aware of the rules that they are gonna be tied up within the rules of the rent control of the city of Sanana. but going back to first time buyers you can't can afford to buy um Cal Hafa is an option for you they are uh, grant money they are second silent for with 30 years zero percent you qualify um the income limit for Orange County are very high uh, for Riverside County they are not so high but there are options out there um the VA loans are an option so that's those opportunities that were not available in March or April you know those buyers were left behind because they couldn't qualify basically not qualify they could qualify but, but the really they didn't the seller work. didn't qualify them because their offer went to the bottom of the pile because they didn't have a chance so there are opportunities out there for the ones buying conventional um everybody all of our clients always want it after the crisis of 2008 everybody wants it a 30-year fix it doesn't matter you ask them how long are you gonna live i don't know but three years into it, the refinance, you know, it's like, are you kidding me? And sometimes even for a higher rate, just to get money out of it. It's like, why you were so adamant to get the 30 year fix? Because maybe they want to have the good night's sleep, but they still keep refinancing. So now we are seeing lenders offering seven year arm, 10 year arm, because there is hope in the horizon. Um, 
Stephen Thomas was mentioning that today about the lower the rates going down to 2023. Another lenders also mentioned that to you to to us in different conversations. I think oh, 2023 is around the corner for me. It's too fa too soon and too fast when the inflation is still uh, not controlled. So we don't know with this new increase that is going to happen. Is it going to be 75 basis point or one full point? What is going to happen? Um, with that, will that be enough? Because definitely it's going to slow down the housing market, but uh, it will be so fast enough to start reducing rates next year. But if not 2023, most likely 2024, 2025. So if someone is getting a seven year arm loan, in seven years, the chances are the rates will come down unless something happens and we live in a constant state of inflation. I am from South America and I can tell you what is living with inflation all your life so this is nothing this is paradise people this is paradise seven year seven percent per year in interest rates is nothing compared what is happening in the rest of the world so let's enjoy if you can afford the house get it you want to move up do it uh, you want to downsize, do it too. Remember, you are downsizing and you purchased your home when it was very low in price. Maybe $100,000, uh, $200,000, maybe. That we're not talking about a long time ago, maybe in the 90s. Uh, that you got that and now it's $1 million. Well, you can transfer your base if you are over 55 years old that was proposition 19 now what is talking about a lot that was in the middle of the pandemic proposition 19 opened the doors to uh, 55 or older to move in it's only applies to the state of california uh, let's clarify that um so you can move there you can move there beautiful communities in southern california for 55 active communities in orange county in a uh, outside of Orange county in inland empire that they are very affordable so there are options out there so don't get paralyzed by the news um life keeps going let's make the best that we can of every day that we have to live um my last thing is this weekend open houses we still have two homes we reduce or improved the price on the model home is 11 percent lower than the appraised value than the bank um, performed in august of this year now it's one million dollars for a 3200 square feet home former model in the gated community of Victoria Grove with no neighbors behind. It has been upgraded over the years. It's a great option if you are looking to move from two story and uh, to one story and uh, this, uh, you are selling to your to your home in Orange County for a two million. You keep one million and move over there. Uh, it's a wonderful home. Then we have a 4,000 square feet home also in a gated community, a pool home where you can enjoy all year round, no neighbor behind. We have another homecoming in Nisbet. Even though we are more local, our take, clients take us out of OC, take us to Riverside. We have lots of clients in the um, Inland Empire too. Uh, that synergy that creates between counties. And even we have clients in LA. Um,